Greetings and salutations, and it isn't it is I Wolf Hortek, and here we are with another delightful video. This time, I'm going to talk a bit about oh, uh, this book called uh, Kingmaker uh, Venture Path. Uh, this is actually one of those fun instances where Paizo and, uh, incidentally, Legendary Games, which worked with Paizo to convert this from Pathfinder 1st Edition to Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and they just managed to achieve it just before the OGL. Just as the, just before the OGL crisis went down, and uh, Paizo went to go and uh, flip it into Pathfinder Remaster. Uh, but anyways, this is still compatible with the Pathfinder Remaster. It just takes some really minor adjustments to get it there. And there's also in the supplementary books that tie into this book uh, conversions for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition as well as Pathfinder First Edition. So just in case if you can't hunt down. The original version of this adventure for Pathfinder First Edition, you can still get all the stuff you need with this and in the, that supplement book for Pathfinder First Edition. Now, first and foremost, uh, this is a big old chonky book, as you can see. Uh, I have to preface this as uh, this is. Uh, this is actually been converted and worked on by two different companies, Paizo and Legendary Games. Legendary Games is like the second or third biggest uh, third-party game de uh, uh, content developer for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This book has over, this has about, oh, 630 pages. And the reason why I have to point that out, and I typically will do so, um is also the fact that this book is also pa uh, the Kingmaker is considered to be one of the best Pathfinder first edition adventures ever. And there's a few others that are super good uh, according to my sources who have played way more than I have. But the uh, reason why I had to point that out is because this is practically $100 after taxes. It's $99.99. Uh, if you look up on Amazon or many other places, sometimes you will find this book for sale for $89 at best, uh, typically. It might be a uh, sale for better, but that's super rare. But anyways, uh, yeah, this is a chonk a book. Uh, yet again, uh, I don't care for just uh, flat color or on the inside cover and uh, page because... That's that space that could be used for something. And considering that this book is 630 some pages, not counting this, oh, not counting this sheet right here and the sheet on the back side, uh, it, it, once you get to that magical 500 page plus territory, you have to start focusing very well, much on typefitting. And you have to focus on efficiency in uh, organization of the book. How? Because uh, anything that uh, adds pages that doesn't add value to the book just complicates things and makes it harder to use. Uh, this section right here, right down here, uh, happens to talk about the history of this adventure path. Uh, the page before that happens to be... Ooh, the table of contents, which goes over each chapter. There's chapter, there's the introduction, which goes over the campaign synopsis, running Kingmaker, character creation for it. Chapter one, call for heroes, which has three parts in it. Chapter two, into the wild, which is has uh, a total of nine parts. Chapter three is stolen land, which is three parts in itself. Chapter four is, uh, is rivers run red, which has three parts. Uh, chapter 5 is Cult of the Bloom, which is also three parts. It, you notice that it's a little variable on the number of parts, but usually it's around three. Chapter 6 is Van Barnhold Varnishing, Vanishing, which is another four-parter. Uh, chapter 7 is Blood for Blood, which is another three-parter. Chapter 8 is War of the River Kings, which is a five-part uh, chapter. Uh, chapter 9 is they Lurk Below, which is two parts. Chapter 10 is Sound of Thousand Screams, a three-parter. And uh, Curse of the Lantern King is a two-parter. Uh, you notice that there's 11. A typical Adventure Pack is around like six books. 
Uh, it ranges between uh, three to six books. Uh, it's level 20. By the way, this is a level 1 to 20 adventure for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So you could literally just start your characters at level 0. Do a little fun and walk around at the beginning of the place. Uh, some small adventuring. adventuring and then uh, roll into it on a level up and uh, go into the first, cha first chapter, first part. The Sword Lord's Feast. Uh... Here is uh, Into the Stolen Lands, the campaign synopsis for uh, Kingmaker. It is uh, very well organized overall. There's oftentimes many charts here for story milestones and uh, points in which of uh, importance for leveling up. Uh, predicting where your character should be at what chapter and what part and what level approximately so you know... If your players are running behind on levels because they keep cutting around corners of things, that you throw a few extra things in, in to get them up a few levels for the next major fight or something like that. There are special details on background uh, character creation, such as backgrounds, classes, and more. As well as other considerations such as alignment, companions, familiars, and so forth. There's also some unique backgrounds to this Kingmaker adventure. Like Borderlands Pioneer, uh, Brevis Noble, Brevik Vake Outcast, Ison Parrot, Patriot, Local Brigand, Roslander, Sword Scion, and more. They use the swashbuckler for the Sword Scion. I forgot her name. Call for Local Heroes. Heroes. This is one of those uh, examples of uh, how each chapter is uh, started up. They'll have a big piece of artwork, and then they'll have the chapter, the name, who wrote it originally, and then they will have the parts listed out with a little quick description below. And I like the honeycomb pattern on the outside that fades in and out at various spots. Uh, there's quite a bit of Pathfinder first edition artwork in this book. However, there's also some newer artwork for Pathfinder, from Pathfinder 2nd Edition artists. Uh, the Pathfinder 1st Edition artwork Eric, is a little more obvious as uh, the quality varied much more greatly with Pathfinder 1st Edition in their artwork and the standards of what the characters look like and stuff like that. The, it was less established as to what the character looks like exactly each and every time. So there will be like items missing from them, or they'd be slightly taller or uh, wider or something like that, inconsistently. <clears throat> then there's Chapter 2, Blood and Blades, which each one of these has maps uh, for important places, important characters, and so forth. And... You have a very nice border around the side here, typically. It usually, is, uh, this column is usually tied into uh, your whatever chapter you're in and whatever part you are in. So it's, it's chapter one. Then you have part one here, part two here, and part three here. And part two is a slightly different shade of green. Incidentally, I have to remind you that... Uh, uh, slightly different shades of green or slightly shades of different shades of blue is a terrible choice for uh, differentiating differences between things as people that is the most common range of color blindness for people so that is not a good idea to use green uh, Paizo seems to like to use green and so does legendary games and that's a no-no I'm going to uh, flip through, and there's a few more pieces here. There's typically a piece of artwork every page. However, they will change it out. And then here's the intro to Chapter 2 as a slightly different example of what uh, you get in the Chapter 2. And I'm actually going to start cutting and jumping very quickly because now I'm in the story, and uh, I do not want to give away stuff. But you know there's hex maps throughout this entire adventure. Uh, as you can see, confirming that uh, the sidebar changes based on where you are in the adventure. So it is a more updated, higher quality uh, arrangement as opposed to older Pathfinder 2nd Edition books. Uh, like Much like the Pathfinder 2nd Edition remaster books where it actually has an, uh, 
a drop down bar that actually has sub drops ups in it or has a speci specialized bar for that specific chapter and I'm gonna just flippy through me you got some really nice artwork of various enemies in the adventure this is a chonky book I'm actually just gonna cut to the chase and jump all the way back here. Because I don't want to like give away too much stuff here. And then get back to the appendixes. I just jumped from chapter 2 past chapter 11. All the way back to the appendixes, you have some, yet again, nice artwork in the book, as well as a mini list with the page numbers and the appendix numbering. And what's the appendix? Beyond the campaign is appendix one. This is uh, everyone above level 20. Uh, what you can do as a game master for your characters that are above level 20 who still want to keep playing at level 20 or beyond uh, please note that I've always been a fan of having rules for levels beyond level 20 or rules that go into infinity or beyond. You know, the hypothetical uh, how to how to level up a person to level 21, level 22, level 23, and what kind of stuff they get. And I actually am developing a rule set as of currently that is... Uh, uh, that is a replacement system for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, as well as as a entirely new system that is parallel to it, but is not uh, a replacement system to Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. And both of them have level zero starting points option, and both of them have beyond level twenty uh, options. And I uh, basically did some math and I worked out systems how to rebalance and make those work. But this whole section right here, this uh, first one, uh, Appendix 1, is all about options for how to run a kingdom. Uh, little things you, your characters can do with their little kingdom you know, uh, after level 20 and so forth. So if you really wanted to, you could play Kingmaker. Uh, and then go to level 20 and then uh, make it way to your level 20 and then you have it as a West Marches kind of campaign in after that where the game master has a server section in like Discord or something like that or on Zoom or whatever platform you want to use. I don't know Zoom very well but uh, they can have their own little section in there and then they could just have the players like okay uh, today is uh, uh, March or merch 20th uh, there are reports that uh, there are goblin raiders that are coming in on on the west front uh, do you want to go oh, and uh, deal with yourself uh, send uh, some allies or send and uh, send your allies or send and common soldiers just to def deal with that and roll from there which I will actually also include in my system as well, a system for doing that as well. Uh, this whole section is all about uh, various characters that your character can interact with. Uh, Appendix 2 is Kingdoms, by the way, which is all about people in your kingdom and kingdoms around your kingdom and various kingdom feats. There's an entire feat system for the, your kingdom, you know, civil services, cooperative leadership, crush descent, it, enduring Anarchy, Gather Livestock, Collect Taxes, far, Fame and Fortune, Forfeited thieves, thieves, Free and Fair, Insider Trading, uh, Inspiring Every Entertainment, and so forth. So you can level up your kingdom and uh, gain feats for your kingdom. You have special kingdom rules here, so if you want to run a kingdom, you can. And so forth. And then we go to Appendix 3. Oh, by the way, this is uh, 
all the stuff, all the stat blocks for buildings. Like the herbalist house, garrisons, construction yard, dumps, embassy, festival halls, foundry, and so forth. The sewer systems. Uh, holidays, events for your kingdom as well. Uh, harvesting, crop failure, uh, various other things like that. Expansion and demand. And then you have rules on warfare for Kingmaker. So you can actually, uh, as I said before, earlier on, you can send out soldiers and uh, they can take care of uh, events. You can train your armies and stuff like that. So this is uh, entire tools, uh, uh, equipment like siege engines, like uh, like ballistas and uh, catapults and trebuchets and many other things and uh, siege towers. Uh, special rules on basic armies and advanced stuff. How to determine losses in the system. War horse and armor. Then you got Kingmaker treasures here. This is the section dedicated to what kind of awesome treasures your characters can acquire on your adventures through Kingmaker, up to building your kingdom and uh, during the running of your kingdom. Then you have a section on NPCs and bosses with various characters and so forth. I'm going to skip a few NPCs because I don't want to give them away. You got some various beasties in here, like a Bandersnatch and a uh, Vendor Herald and a uh, uh, Wine Worm. A Wild Hunt, a Wild Hunt Horse, a Wild Hunt haw, Hound, and so forth. And then you have various indexes back here for uh, important details. Quest Index here. You have a Quest Index. You got a nice little piece of artwork here and so forth and we're right around that uh, uh that by the way was page 627 by the way so 628 640 and then you have this extra thing right here that throws off the math uh, but anyways as you can see back here uh, go a few pages over you happen to have a kingdom sheet that comes with kingmaker That uh, shows off all the important stats for your kingdom. You got a building, a uh, urban grid plan system here for uh, designing and engineering your city. So you can uh, get out the graph paper and understand how to build plots in your city and how to uh, fill out your information. And then you have little section uh, options right here. So if you wanted to, you can take this book to a printer. A printer, a printing machine, this thing where you open up, a, or a copy machine, where you open up the top and you put this book down on it, and it prints out a whole bunch of these sheets, and then you could take these little boxes and apply it to this sheet, or you can make a bigger one of these by uh, taking several prints of this page and setting them next to each other, so you can assemble your own town or cities in your kingdom and then back okay so you got your kingdom um, stat blocks sheet your stat uh, information sheet you got your city planning sheet you have your buildings for your city and then you also have your army sheet and your army sheet is uh, basically the handy dandy sheet you use to keep track of your uh, feats and abilities for your army and all the components of your army so you can actually you send out your army you know your red army your blue army and your green army to various things and uh, take them out or however you want to call them you want to call them the griffin army or uh, army of griff the griffin riders uh the dragon dragon riders or 
the troll tamers or something like that and so forth and as I said there's this is a collaboration between legendary games and Paizo Publishing so there's a little advertisement in the back of this book now I have not personally played Kingmaker but from what I know and what I've seen this book is ridiculous value for uh, the number of page it is uh, just because there is kingdom construction and operation rules in this book plus army rules warfare rules and military maintenance rules in this book this book has this expanding nearly infinite campaign potential where you could say you could run a one to a level one to twenty campaign in this book you have a bunch of extra stuff you can do after that uh, and then there's also stuff after that or on top of that so you could literally run this in like three two to three years or four or five depending on how frequently your group meets up and you guys can literally just continue to play this for another 20 or 30 years just be just having like 10 or 15 years just be kingdom management and building your king your empire in the stolen lands so it's really hard to calculate the pre or uh, the, the pre uh, the pre score for this because this book can easily be a 4.75 star plus in a five star rating system adventure for your characters however the back end of the book the the extra stuff that makes it go beyond the beyond of most other things is literally a lot of time management rules and uh, uh, fiddly mechanics things that uh, some players might get really bored with and that it's not necessarily like oh the, all the extra stuff after level 20 is like you going on adventures or extra levels on top of your character uh, adventuring around becoming stronger becoming more knowledgeable in all the things in the in the world continuing beyond you simply just arrive at level 20 you hit the level 20 cap you do some extra stuff around level 20 and then you have the kingdom creation and management and military rules to carry you on from there and that kind of stuff sometimes burns people out very easily and gets really boring, particularly for some game masters, story masters. I have game masters in my group. My main group and my secondary group are almost entirely nothing but game masters with the exception of like one or two people in the secondary group. Uh, and uh, my uh, other third group had a lot of game masters in it as well. However, it is important to note that some game masters... Uh, really burn out really fast when it gets to kingdom management so like my friend Cole uh, he runs amazing theatrical combats and he does a really good job at making the moment really intense but anytime a system or a game uh, slides into uh, town management or business management or uh, mercantile kind of vibe he kind of peters he kind of loses interest in that he has friends that who really like to get into that stuff and that's not how he wants to run his uh, adventures or campaigns he kind of just wants to run his adventures and campaigns he's like you are traveling adventurers traveling across the lands righting wrongs uh, or doing wrongs and uh, fighting epic foes and adventuring into unique and interesting locations and then when it gets into like your party wants to be your, your player wants to be a mayor of a town when it doesn't really work for him uh, and I understand that uh, so the value of this is kind of fluctuating on that uh, the first 
from level 1 to 20 is a solid adventure from what I can read through and through right through so it is a awesome buy right there the extra value on the back end is mostly into the kingdom management management and uh, construction and as well as army rules and construction so a part of that 4.75 stars maybe like the 0.75 is the beyond level 20 part and in that case that might not be of any value to a good number of game masters because you can play through this and it'd be just absolutely awesome and then you get to the kingdom management part of it and you find that painfully boring and your players lose all interest in wanting to do that once they've gotten a few sessions into it and you go from there and then there's some players who as I said before in my a little bit earlier they absolutely love that stuff they literally try to do that early on in adventures and campaigns and it's like I remember one adventure where we were uh, in 5th edition where we were rolling around on a horizon back and we actually tried to start a traveling business on said horizon back uh, it didn't really get into that we did a lot of customization we spent tons of platinum we got uh, from a dragon uh, from a temple but on customizing this horizon back platform into being a fold out uh, it was intended to have a fold down storefront which can slide off the horizon back side and people can enter and they can we can do business with them we never used it <laughs> i think no actually we i think we did use it but we used it maybe as an improvised crushing uh, improvised weapon in the heat of a moment no, it was the net. It was There was a net we had built on the back so we could haul up treasure onto the horizon back to get it into the shop on the horizon back so we can travel with it. And we actually used that net as an improvised is anti-trail uh, chase weapon to win that situation. But anyways, uh, there's, there's some players who and game masters who really love kingdom management, business management, and stuff like that. And then there's some that... It's literally the bane of their existence, and just even thinking about it for five seconds makes the game a whole lot worse for them. And then there's some people who really hate the adventuring part, and who really just want to run a business in a fantasy world. Uh, Kingmaker here is an excellent situation where you have stuff that builds you up to ruling a kingdom or running in a nation. There's a ton of action. There's a bunch of action from start to finish, and then if you truly wanted to run a kingdom, all that real, uh, a lot of that kingdom stuff is towards the end of the adventure. So there you go. <laughs> so this is really hard. The hard part is, uh, is all that the potential of having a campaign go beyond level twenty, and your players and you running a kingdom for many sessions and I probably advise that the kingdom part of the game probably becomes a west march uh, not a west marches but pay by message play by message kind of section so you guys can go ahead and have your standard sessions adventuring in the in the world of Galerion or whatever world just take this module and shove it into and then you, when it comes to the kingdom management section you have just a discord for that like a section like oh uh today is such and such you send messages back and forth earth uh, early in the morning uh we're gonna do that on between session uh in the uh, discord uh and then we go off and uh, do our regular adventure and then we uh log on uh, between the session we uh the game master leaves a message about all the stuff and the players make decisions and they do some quick tactics for about an hour uh, here and there and and then when you get to the end of kingmaker you can just continue that on on kingdom management and construction and expansion onward on discord or some other messaging platform that you guys uh, happen to use so there you go uh I really love the idea of uh, getting into and running this adventure with my players. Uh, 
I am planning on uh, another campaign, uh, bringing a bunch of people in in into a beginner run and for Pathfinder Second Edition. Uh, so that is also a possibility uh, of uh, some point having that group go into Kingmaker after the first campaign is through, or the first uh, trainee adventure maybe, uh, or it might be like the third or fourth one after that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Paizo and uh, Paizo does a super good job of producing tons of adventures, so it becomes really difficult to figure out what you want to get your players into. And in which case, I might just end up like taking the Discord or uh, or some uh, messaging page each for any of the groups to uh, just, uh, just list out all the adventures with the basic synopsis of what the adventure is, or what is the theme of it, and uh, where it kind of goes, and the general vibe it travels into, and uh, let the players pick which one they want to run and uh, be played in, and go from there. I'm, I'm basically, in the past year or two, uh, basically been just getting people uh, started into playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and I've only had very limited uh, action in that direction because a lot of people just naturally stick with whatever system they started with. So there you go. I really wish I could get more fun with Pathfinder 2nd Edition as well as Starfinder 1st Edition. So thank you very much for watching this video. And this video is going to take a really long time to upload and process. So if you enjoyed these videos, please leave a like, subscribe, share, and add to playlist. And uh, have a delightful day, a nice night, a wonderful weekend, magnificent month, and see you next time. Ciao.